The Olympics brings the world's athletes together to compete, but not all participants play fair. Which athletes are remembered more for their bad behavior than their skills? Keep watching to see the Olympic athletes who took things way too far. The marathon at the 1904 Olympics in St. Louis was all sorts of bizarre. The first Olympic marathon in the United States, it was way too hot with not enough water and, as a result, very few finishers. One contributor to the weirdness of this race was a single racer, Fred Lors, who dealt with severe stomach cramps once he reached the 9-mile mark. Instead of graciously bowing out with almost two-thirds of the race remaining, Lors hitched a ride in his coach's car, waving at his fellow competitors as he rode for the next 11 miles before he started running again. That's right, he was essentially the male Rosie Ruiz almost eight decades before the fact, but he took a shortcut in a totally different way than the woman who won the 1980 Boston Marathon. Despite being ordered off the course at one point, Lors kept on running until the finish line where he was declared the winner. The joy over the fact that an American had won was short-lived, however, as someone openly accused Lors of cheating. But even as the crowd was booing him for his dishonesty, he explained that the whole thing was a joke and that he had no plans of accepting the gold medal. Ultimately, it was another American runner, Thomas Hicks, who ended up winning the marathon, albeit with the aid of strychnine. This marked the first documented instance in which an athlete used performance-enhancing drugs in the Olympics, though at that time, such substances were perfectly legal. For the uninitiated, the water polo match between Hungary and the USSR at the 1956 Melbourne Olympics may look like two teams getting violent with each other simply because of the players' unsportsmanlike behavior. However, there were very serious geopolitical implications at play ahead of the match. The Olympics were held shortly after a violent uprising against the pro-Soviet government in Hungary, so tensions between both nations were at an all-time high. Given this backdrop, the Hungary vs. USSR match was especially intense, and players from both sides were noticeably aggressive. Things really went off the rails, with Hungary enjoying a comfortable 4-0 lead in the closing minutes of the game. It was at that point that Soviet player Valentin Prokopov head-butted Hungary's Irvin Zader. This caused Zader to bleed from a cut under his right eye. A massive brawl instantly broke out in the swimming pool, with some Hungarian fans going as far as to leave the stands and confront the Soviet team. Riot police had to intervene in order to break things up, and the match was called in favor of Hungary, which eventually won the gold. The incident, dubbed as Blood in the Water, left a lasting mark on Hungary's water polo players. This included Zador, who was one of several Hungarian Olympians to defect to the U.S. soon after Melbourne. It was an incident so scandalous that in the nearly 30 years since it happened, the event has spawned documentaries, a TV miniseries, and a big-budget Hollywood movie called I, Tanya. In the early 1990s, American figure skaters Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan had a fierce rivalry on the ice, though it was only in 1994 when one of these women went too far. On January 6th of that year, less than two months before the Winter Olympics in Lillehammer, Norway, Kerrigan was clubbed in the right knee with a metal baton while she practiced at Detroit's Kobo Arena. It was later revealed that the attacker and his uncle, who drove the getaway car, were both hired by Harding's then-husband Jeff Galuli and her bodyguard Sean Eckhart. Sweetie, the death threat's off! Whatever. Whoa, you cannot call this thing off. This baby has moving parts. Balls are already being played with. With her top rival out of the way, Harding won the gold at the 1994 U.S. Figure Skating Championships and earned an Olympic spot. Kerrigan was also offered a spot despite the fact the attack left her injured and unable to compete at the event. Meanwhile, Galuli and Eckhart both confessed to helping orchestrate the crime, and it became clear that Harding was also involved. She only finished eighth at Lillehammer, with many fans suggesting that her subpar finish was karma. Kerrigan, meanwhile, ended up with a silver medal. After Harding pleaded guilty to the charge of conspiracy to hinder prosecution, she was banned from competition for life by the U.S. Figure Skating Association. In addition, her 1994 national championship victory was revoked. Heels in pro wrestling have it easy. Attack an official, get suspended or fined in the storyline, then return a week or two later for more in-ring cheating and referee baiting. But if you're a martial artist competing in the Olympics, the punishment is far more severe. Just ask Cuban Taekwondo athlete Angel Matos, who won the gold medal in the men's over 80 kilogram division at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Eight years later, he would find himself in hot water at the Beijing Olympics for behavior only appropriate in the WWE. Matos was disqualified from his bronze medal match at the 2008 Games after he took too long to return from an injury timeout. Upset over what he felt was an unfair decision, Matos pushed one of the judges and ran toward the referee, kicking him in the face. He then spat on the mat before he was escorted out of the arena. 
Following the match, the World Taekwondo Federation announced that Matos and his coach Leotis Gonzalez were both banned for life from all the organization's sanctioned competitions. Furthermore, all of Matos's records from the 2008 Games were immediately expunged for his violation of the spirit of Taekwondo in the Olympic Games. In sports leagues that have annual drafts, tanking has become a commonplace and very controversial practice. It entails doing everything short of deliberately losing games in order to finish the season with a poor record. Being in a losing position will give your team a chance to end up with a top draft selection. The 2012 London Olympics saw another more blatant form of tanking take place. It involved four women's badminton doubles teams who tried to game the system in their favor by losing on purpose. How was that possible? Without getting too much into the complex details, the four teams, two from China, one from Indonesia, and one from South Korea, were disqualified for allegedly throwing their matches. They tried this strategy in order to face easier opponents in the tournament's later rounds. The audience quickly caught on to what was happening. Fans booed and jeered the players for their subpar performances, which often involved serving the shuttlecock toward the net. Officials also seemed to notice something fishy was going on, as they gave multiple warnings to the athletes involved in the scandal. To nobody's surprise, the attempted tanking at London led to significant rule changes ahead of the 2016 Games at Rio de Janeiro. Countries are now limited to fielding no more than two pairs in badminton doubles, down from a maximum of three. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about the messed up history are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.